Hello and welcome to this review of my Focus FK727. I got this guy right here off of someone in America. I had to shell out for it a bit, especially on shipping, but I guess I've got a weakness for focus boards. <laughs> it's in very good condition though, and it's a pretty interesting board, so I think it was worth it. Now Focus are most well known for three generations of keyboards. The first generation, which end in 1001, such as the 2001, 3001, and 5001, which mostly came with white Alps. The second generation, which end in 1000, such as the 6000, 8000, and 9000, which often came with Alps clones. And the third generation, which end in 200, such as the 6200, 7200, 8200, and 9200, which all came with focus done with slider switches. Before all of these, there is the lesser known zeroth generation of focus boards though, the 505, 727, 747 and 767, which are always a nice find because they seem to always come with blue Alps, or in rare cases, these Cyan Omrons, the only source of these switches that we know of at the moment. The reason I call it zeroth generation is because they don't have all that much in common with any of the focus boards that came after yet. In fact, at this stage, they were more of a focus Northgate amalgamation. And if I ever get a Focus 555, I'll talk about that in more detail. Now these zeroth gen focuses aren't exactly common to begin with, and with only a few of them carrying Cyan Omrons, that makes these switches very rare indeed. Like my Lime Alps Project L board that I reviewed a while ago, I wouldn't be surprised if the amount of people that own Cyan Omron boards out there can be counted on two hands. This model, the 727, appears to be extremely rare as well. In fact, I think this is the first one ever reported, although it looks completely identical to the more common 747. The construction is very different from other focus boards, which are normally pretty modestly built with lots of plastic and only a thin metal mounting plate. This one has a reasonably tough plastic shell and even a metal back panel. Nice. It uses a five pin DIN plug that's ATXT switchable using this little switch here and it comes with the same rubber shod massive flip out feet as the Northgate Omnikey, including the cable retainers here. The good thing about the rubber on the feet is that it prevents slipping, which is a nice touch. You can also see the model sticker at the back here, which is completely in the style of other Focus stickers. It's a uh, dull metallic, just like that on the Omnikey. Cables nice and coiled as well, fairly well made, overall a solid board. One thing it does have in common with other focus boards is the different order of lock lights, which are in the widest bank of lock lights I've ever seen, by the way. And there's a mylar strip here that you can write shortcuts for the F keys on, but because they're to the side, that seems somewhat incongruous. Speaking of the F keys, they're there because it uses the AT layout, which will probably seem like a quite bewildering thing for the younger viewers among you. But I've actually seen much weirder by now. The AT layout is based on the IBM AT Model F keyboard, which introduced it, and it's where the big ass enter came from. Normally I don't mind these enters, but the problem is that most of the time, and in this case as well, they make room for it by moving the backslash key next to the backspace key, which then becomes very short and hard to hit. So when I'm trying to erase something, I'm actually outputting tons of hashtags. <laughs> It only has 10 F keys, F11 and F12 hadn't been invented yet, and it uses the XT modifier layout where the ALT, there's only one, and the caps lock take up the spaces where control normally goes, and control is where the caps lock key normally lives. A fair amount of people actually prefer the control key here, but I prefer it the way it was originally done, with the lock key above shift. Other weird quirks of the AT layout is that the tilde key is where the escape key would otherwise have gone, instead the escape key is on the numpad next to num lock and scroll lock, and the divide, multiply and enter key had to make way for the system request and print screen buttons, which is annoying if you're used to use the numpad for calculator functions. It also lacks a nav cluster because that was introduced with the later IBM Model M. Instead, if you want to use the arrow or nav keys, you need to keep toggling between numbers and nav commands with the num lock key. Might seem daunting at first, but actually I'm kind of used to that, and it's not the end of the world. A bigger disadvantage is that the arrow keys come in a cross nav, rather than the T nav everyone's used to nowadays. The keycaps are also quite unfocused by the way. They're thin ABS with rimless pad printing, unlike the nice double shot keycaps they'd later use almost religiously. The printing looks very sharp, as good as double shot printing, but it's much less resilient and on a few of the keys it's actually already starting to show signs of damage even though the caps haven't really started to shine yet. 
they're somewhere shiny by default though almost like they were it out of the factory and the reason i know it's not just from use is because even the very rarely used keys like sysrec show this shininess in fact all the keys do of course it's also got a ginormo valentino spacebar that's almost the entire length of the bottom row because there's barely fuck all else near it so it can afford to stretch its limbs a little the most interesting thing about the board is probably the switches though like I said, they're Cyan Omnoms, <coughs> which are a much, much rarer version of the more usual Amber Omnoms. I previously reviewed a troublesome Chikoni with Amber Omrons. Go check it out if you've got some time. That board's pretty dope. I'll put a link to it here, as well as in the description. Anyway, the Amber Omnoms are a rather comical design with laughably low reliability and the clicky sound that's ridiculously loud, even by my standards, and that's saying something. After the Model F, they're the loudest switches I know, and they have a cool sound too. It's the closest to a typewriter I've heard in a switch yet. I describe them like Alps on steroids or something because they feel like Alps, except much more extreme, more tactile and clicky. These Cyan Omrons are very different by comparison. Mm -hmm. They're still clicky though. Why is it that all manufacturers seem to agree that blue must mean clicky? Like with the amber ones, a bunch of switches didn't work at first, and I replaced one entirely by an amber one, this one right here. And if I press it, as well as a Cyan one, you should be able to hear the amber one is higher pitched and much louder too. The Cyan ones seem bassier and more restrained, closer to Blue Alps. Speaking of cyan, I don't know who came up with that, but they're not cyan at all, it's more of a sky blue. They also feel quite different compared to the really quite tactile amber switches, these feel almost linear. I'll show you with some loose switches, look how much more the switch gives in after the tactile bump on the amber ones. As a result of this moderation, they feel much more usable though, nowhere near as weird as the Amber Omnons. They're pretty good actually, not light or anything, but nice and well-rounded. Apart from the reliability, there's one major problem with them though. I find that while gaming, sometimes a key would get physically stuck, so it wouldn't pop back up again. So I often switch keyboards while playing. A major shame, although the modifier layout doesn't lend itself to gaming all that much anyway. So, in summary, the layout is alienating, the switches are unreliable and not hugely practical, and the keycaps are pretty meh, so I don't think I can really recommend this for any serious user. But as a collector, I think it's really cool. The switches are fun to use, and nicer than the Amber Omnoms in my opinion. The typing noise is nice too, and apart from that, I think it just looks cool. That's just something about old focus boards in my opinion. They knew how to make a keyboard look nice and stylish. Anyway, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.